Nathan's dead, please Minecraft 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 Nathan's dead. Dad, is this really your intro? <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Nathan's Dad Plays Minecraft, going back to the nether fortress we found in the last episode here. And today we are going to build a mob farm for fortress mobs. So the mobs that we should get out of this farm are, uh, let's see, we should get zombie pigmen, which they're not really fortress mobs, but they're just kind of inevitable to spawn in this sort of in this sort of deal. We should also hopefully get in addition to the zombie pigmen, we should get wither skeletons, we should get blazes. Those are the two I'm really wanting to get. And then we should also, in addition to that, get Da, 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 with their, uh, some just some regular skeletons and occasional endermen I think and I think those are what the the limit to what will spawn in this in this farm okay so now you noticed I got some nether brick there and what I'm doing now is I'm building the spawning uh, or the the actual trap so I've, I'm using top have slabs so nothing spawns here. This is where the player is going to actually walk. And I'm going out probably about 30 blocks or so. Um, maybe 35. You can make it as long or short as you want. I'm going to do this in two separate modules. So as I'm killing, in, killing them in one, they're spawning in the second. And then I'll go back and forth between the two modules. Now I made this three modules wide in this tutorial looking back I'm thinking two would probably be sufficient hit one on the way up and one on the way back but it's it's pretty easy to customize based on what you want to do so these are where the player will be standing now there are a couple of different spawning mechanics for the fortress mobs first off you have to be inside a larger bounding box of a fortress a larger bounding box what do you mean okay so now what I'm doing is I am da, 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 building this building the place where the mobs will actually spawn. So and I'll explain this in a little bit here. But basically you are going to have them spawn in a single file line and then you're going to walk on half slabs underneath them to where they are unable to spawn where you are actually going to be so and the reason I put those longer pillars on the end there is because that way they don't see you and shoot at you because if they are able to see you through that they will shoot at you and they can hit you if you do not put those longer pillars on the end so we'll go into the details of this farm here in just a minute so and I'll explain I'll slow it down and explain exactly what I'm doing here once I get it working right so yeah so there's two bounding boxes the first bounding box is a the bounding box of the whole fortress now, in order to get nether mobs to spawn within that bounding box, what you have to do is you have to uh, have them slot, spawn on nether rack. Or I'm sorry, nether rack on nether brick. The only way they will spawn in the larger bounding box is with nether brick. The smaller, the smaller bounding boxes are where the rooms are, like where this tower is. And from what I understand, this nether fortress bounding box the actual boxes the room boxes are still intact and so you could potentially if you uh, if you used a a program that lets you see those bounding boxes you could potentially use something along those lines and you can you can have them spawn on any block at all if they are within what's a hallway or an intersection or a room within the nether fortress itself. 
so. Uh, yes. Um, and then, of course, if you just use regular bricks and they're not in one of those junctions, you'll get zombie pigmen and... What else? You'll get zombie pigmen and the occasional enderman. I guess you can get more enderman than normal. So that's that's potentially a way to get some enderman. And make sure that in the fortress you are lighting everything up. You notice there were all those glowstone in there. That is what's keeping your yep, you can see them there. That's what's keeping your mobs from spawning inside there is the light level from that glowstone. So you want to make sure you keep that lit up. Uh, or half slab it. Half slab it is probably the easiest thing because you do not need very much light in order to, I mean, you don't need, you need a lot of light in order to prevent like blazes and such from spawning. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Okay, so yeah, so you've got a too high area for you to walk around, which is what I'm making now. I did eventually go back and make this a solid floor. Um, instead of the instead of the slits right here, I decided that that would be a little bit better. So, but yeah, so you've got a too high sp space where you are are walking around, and so uh, basically, if you're if you converted everything to half slabs the way that I did. I made a five high space where they uh, where the farm is going to be my half slab on the bottom and half slab on the top and then there is a three high area where they will be able to spawn well actually it's three and a half because I didn't bother putting Oh yeah, no, I guess it, I guess it's going to be three. Three high area where your fortress mobs can spawn. Now the reason it's got to be three high is be, is because you are going to want some, uh, some withers to spawn. And withers are three high, and so in order for them to spawn, your spawning area needs to be three high. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting some nether brick. As of right now in this version of the game, the only way to get nether brick is to mine this fortress. There are no mobs that drop it from what I understand. You just need to mine these bricks out very, very carefully and make sure that you are able to collect every one possible. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm mining these bricks out so that way I can make sure I have enough for my fortress. Now this is also going to be an easy way to get down to the bottom of the world in later episodes. You do not want to be at the bottom of the world for this farm. You want to make sure you're actually in the bounding box of the nether fortress. In other words, you will not get any nether, nether mobs to spawn. And so being efficient at the bottom of the world is not going to do you any good with this, with this farm. In fact, I've seen a couple of people that have made this farm too low and then they didn't get any nether mobs to spawn at all and then they had to start over. So, yeah. So, yep, you'll want to be careful collecting your nether brick. And then, again, make sure you're half slabbing everything. I'm going to go ahead and collect the rest of the soul sand and nether rack and make sure I half slab all of that. I do have some safely at the base. I do recommend making two trips with this. The first trip with some of it, and then the second trip with the rest. Just in case you die, that way you don't have to worry about not being able to get nether wart in this version of Minecraft. Because then you're not going to be able to make any potions, you're not going to be able to get any villagers. And it's really going to be very hard to progress if you die with all of that on you. So, had to go get some more cobblestone, and now we're back. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the farm on the other side. And then we'll start building it so mobs can farm. So now what I'm doing is going out, oh, about 
30, 35 blocks, something like that. You can be a little bit more methodical with that. I just, mobs will not spawn more than 24 blocks, or within 24 blocks of you. Whoa, that is a blaze. Uh, yeah, so make sure you <laughs> light up your, um, gosh, let's see what I did here. Let's see, I've got all my glowstone. Oh, down here, looks like it got glow light level 12. So, you know something, I am going to have slab all of this as well. And hopefully that fixes that problem. So yeah, luckily we were able to dispatch him pretty quickly. But yeah, so that's that's why it's important because other words you're going to have all kinds of mobs spawning, especially since that won't be the only spawnable space in the world. And that makes it a little bit harder to build a farm. Okay. So now what I'm doing now is just laying the foundation. So with this particular one, I decided to do three spawning lines, I guess you would call them. And so the, where the mobs are spawned are going to be in the slits where I've got, or where I've got, where I don't have any cobblestone now. The slots that I put down are half slabs, are, are bottom half slabs, so nothing will be able to spawn the, on those. We'll be able to safely walk around there. Um, and like I said, later on I do fill that in. I decided that that would be better for like not losing experience and, um, you know, losing drops, things like that. Not a huge problem, I don't think, but also for when I had to fix the farm, it was a little bit of a pain having to deal with those slits. So yeah, it would have saved me a few resources, but it wasn't really worth it in the end. For that for that extra little bit of cobblestone I, I got or I saved from from doing that so yes yeah, so now I'm putting a roof on it now very very important that this is five high you don't want it any higher than that because then when the blazes do fly up which they do inev inevitably do you are going to have a hard time hitting them you're gonna have to crouch and then you risk having blazes shoot at you I don't think with with this design even if they do shoot at you they will be able to hit you, but I have not tested that for sure. So, uh, again, the goal with this was a farm where you don't have to worry about stuff killing you. So putting the roof on, and then once I get this roof on, I'll slow it down and show you exactly what I did so you can replicate this in your Skyblock world. And again, these are bottom half slabs that I'm putting here so nothing spawns on the roof as well okay so I am getting my netherrack da, 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 counting exactly what I did there I'm sorry not netherrack I'm getting my cobblestone converting it all into slabs just to make it easier you can use slab you can go back and forth between slabs and full blocks if you want honestly just makes it easier to count for me anyway so anyway so yes so we are going one so that'd be two half steps three four five six seven seven down from the bottom there for our killing chambers and then where we're going to walk we're going to do one two three four five that makes it exactly too high so we can walk through without crouching three four five one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. And again, I would also recommend just doing this two wide, potentially even making them a little bit longer. I, it seems to me that that would be better. And then I also made these railings on the side. You can also use fences. This is just basically to keep me from accidentally falling off into the void is all that's for. Okay, and then you're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five all the way up and down these corridors and I can go ahead and speed this up because this is just doing the same thing over and over again but yeah this is just where you are going to walk and then on the on the 
lines where the mobs are going to spawn, you want that seven because you do not want them to be able to see you. And if they're looking down a long corridor, they will still, the blazes will still be able to see you and shoot at you. So the idea with the seven, seven half slabs down is that they're not going to be able to see you from the side and shoot at you and hit you because they can hit you if they shoot down a long corridor. I do know that. And so, no need in just accidentally getting hit and losing durability on your stuff and then having to use the XP to repair your stuff instead of having being able to use it to get levels and repair, repair tools and things of that nature. Okay, so slowing it back down again now that I've got the nether brick slabs. Now again, you do not use slabs when you do this. Um, I found this out the hard way. But we'll sh I'll show you what happens when you do the do this. But you're going to want to use full blocks instead of slabs here, and make sure they're full blocks because I also tried to fix it by adding additional half slabs on the bottom. And apparently, the spawning mechanic with fortress mobs is very picky. It has to be full bricks, not half slabs on top of half slabs. So even though that in all intention purposes is a full brick with fortress mobs they do not see it that way and they say it is two half slabs and so they for some reason do not like it and so putting lights over on the end of this just so I can keep them from spawning at the very very end while I'm going from one side to the other so that way I can complete the row without having to worry about mobs spawning on the other side. At this at this point I thought there would be fortress mobs spawning and so I did not want a blaze shooting at me or a wither skeleton coming for all the way from the other side while I was still building it. And so I built it small enough to where they can just barely spawn at the ends there and so I was hoping if I lit that up that that would be fine now again you you are going to want to use full bricks, bricks here but I am using top half slabs here so there is a spawnable space and as you can see there's only half a block space between where I'm standing and where the mobs are so they will not be able to get to me even like the baby pigmen and stuff will not be able to get through that and the fortress mobs should not be able to see me and even if they do i don't think there's anything that they can do about it other than stand there and wait for me to kill them so let's see what happens when you build it with half slabs i do hear some noises and we got pigmen and we've got more pigmen and then we've got pigmen on top of that and we get the occasional enderman and that is all that is going to spawn if you use the half slabs so i'm glad i was able to do this for you to keep you guys from making the same mistakes that i made and again i also tried with adding another half slab on the bottom of this to make it a full block of half slabs so two half slabs of nether brick and that did not work either i only got zombie pigmen with that as well so for a while there I was thinking maybe that they had removed the larger bounding box from the farm but I talked to the creator of the map and he said that no there is indeed a very large bounding box around the farm and so I had to rethink my strategy and uh, go ahead I went ahead with full blocks instead of using two half slabs and We'll see what happens when I did that. So right now I am placing down torches on all these blocks because I'm planning on killing everything and then removing them. But wait, I hear some noises. I had already finished with this side and success. Yes, so full blocks is the way to go with this. And as you can see, they are not able to get to me at all. And so I can just pretty well kill them with, without having to worry about, like I could even not wear armor here. So 
The fact that mobs do not spawn in the wither in 4.07 makes it super easy to make these mob farms. Whereas if you had to do this in vanilla Minecraft, you would have to do a whole lot of clearing out first. And the Witherman drops soul sand, so I did not realize that. That is cool. And so I was thinking the soul sand we had was all we were going to get. But it looks like the Wither do indeed drop soul sand in this version, so we will be able to... Uh, the wither, wither skeleton, so we will be able to make some actual withers and then get nether stars and uh, we'll see if they drop anything as well so yeah this is very cool so we'll be able to get some wither heads from this we'll be able to get coal we'll be able to get blaze rods and so our fuel problems are over so yeah this has been nathan's dad and don't forget to like and subscribe really helps us out if you if you like this video uh, make sure you watch the other videos. If you've got any ideas for future video videos, leave a comment. I've got tons of stuff planned, but if you guys have any questions or if I left something out or if I need to be more clear, just leave a comment in the description below. And thanks for watching.